Hi everybody, it's been a really hot day here in Perth. So I'm just out here with my stud cats, giving them a bit of a cool down with the hose. They've got their misters going, the air conditioner's going on in the barn. You can probably hear that in the background. Um, and I was checking my YouTube channel just before and somebody made a comment that I think I, I just showed the boys over there. There's um, Bruno up the end, birds going over the top. Somebody said to me, um, could you do a video on keeping girls? And I thought to myself, oh my God, I've done lots and lots and lots of videos about stud cats and here I am with my stud cats but I've never done a video about keeping girls. So here's my top tips for keeping females. Now, I often talk about when I'm talking about stud cats is the fact that they're not pet cats. You can love them like a pet cat, but you don't keep them like a pet cat. And I have also said many times that, you know, girls are a bit different and girls, you can actually um, keep them in a more like pet-like situation. But here's the thing. When you have girls and you're keeping them in the house, when they start to get to the age where they're hormonal and when they come, start coming into season, they don't behave like pet cats. Um, and so these are things you need to think about as well because we think that, oh, I feel like I might have sent the message that you need to have proper housing for your boys. There's the misters going off. You need to have proper housing for your boys um, and, and focus on them but I, but, and that your girls just be fine as pets, but it's not the case. Um, your girls, when they come to a certain age, when their hormones start to kick in, they are going to start behaving badly, basically. Uh, less chance than your boys, but they're still ones that will. The first thing you'll notice is that when they come into season and they start calling, they're going to be crazy noisy. Um, even the girls that don't cry out a lot still make sort of a noise, a, uh, uh, sort of noise all the time, and you're going to have to put up with that. So if you've got them running around the house, that's going to be really annoying. Um, in that situation, I always say confine them because you don't want them, their natural instinct is to roam about until they find a mate and you don't want them doing that in your house because um, they'll, just, they'll just walk up and down and make more noise and make more noise. So you can make things a little bit easier by um, confining them in some way and that might just be shutting them into a particular room or, or closing off the hallway or some of the rooms in your house you know so that they can't get into the kitchen or they can't get into the bathroom um, just reducing the amount of space that they can roam in the other thing that they'll do is they will pee on things too they don't spray like a boy spray so a boy is um when boys will have a few ways of behaving they will pee and it'll be stinky in their tray and, and, and be good boys but pee normally but it'll be stinky in their tray because their pee does smell worse than normal cat pee. Then there'll be ones that'll um, just spray when certain things, when the mood takes them, when the girl's calling, when another boy's around, when you know it's Monday, you know they'll just pee because they, they'll spray because they spray. Then you have the habitual sprayers who will spray instead of um, when they empty their bladder, every time they empty their bladder they will do it in a spray and they'll spray on things so they'll go you know this is the space where I like to spray and I'm going to go and piss here and I'm going to piss there and I'm going to piss there and that's it I'm done my blood is empty good I'll drink some more water oh I need to pee I'm going to go piss there and piss there and piss there they have their spots if you like so they won't use the tray I've got boys that don't you know the tray's got poop in it but no pee in it because they're spraying in their spray spots um, and even if you put a tray in their spray spots they'll find another spray spot so there's different levels of the amount of spraying that a boy will do and a girl is sort of taking uh, probably that middle position where they will um, go to the toilet normally but when they're in season they will wee on things and they'll wee on things randomly they'll they'll just you know sometimes they'll all go, all go in the same spot all the time but a lot of the times they just pick something to pee on and it'll be your couch it'll be some clothing it'll be a bedding it'll be just be random things in the house and again if you're letting them roam around in the house while they're in season there's more chance they're going to pee on something important um, and I can think of you know um, when I used to have them in the house when we lived in our old house I used to have the girls in the house more than I would do now and I remember things like um, having to photocopy documents because they'd peed on them and I needed to throw the originals away. Um, coming into my study to find that um, a box, the lid, they got the lid off a box and they'd peed in it and all the stuff in the box was just soaked in pee. Um, they peed on my cat show bag, you know, just stuff. So these are things that a normal desex cat would not do, but a, an entire female will. <laughs> will do for you and that's a bit crazy so they're noisy um, and they will still pee on things not always the other things that they'll do is they will fight so they girls that have been the best friends and lived together for a long time will suddenly hate each other hate each other and they will um, you know really crack it at each other and um, 
fight. The girl that's in season might attack the girl that's not in season. And they're quite serious um, about it when they do get going. So you might need to separate them because of that. And you're also going to have to deal with the fact that the cats are fighting and you're going to have to keep, you know, um, often if they're fighting, you might have to break up the fights. Um, what else do they do? They will also um, try and get out. <laughs> So they will get, they'll be the, this cat will be like really docile and happy-go-lucky and then the moment she comes into season she's trying to get out the, any open door that's open, she's trying to rush the door to get out because they're driven by hormones and want to get mated. So that's a problem as well. So are they harder to keep than stud cats? No, stud cats are harder to keep, especially when you consider that, um, and I know there's, I hear lots and lots of stories and people like, oh, sorry, Nant just bit me. People like to tell me about their unicorn cats. You know, he does this and he doesn't do that and he's never done this. And um, I remember one of the newbies in my cat breeders club, my new cat breeders club recently said to me, was saying that, you know, she has her stud cat inside and he's all great and he doesn't do this and doesn't do that. And there's my cat Bruno making a bit of noise and mine, you know, he's not a unicorn. Um, and I said to her, how does your house smell? <laughs> because... And I was joking, I was just, we were having fun. Um, but a stud cat stinks, literally. Their pee smells like, I don't know what. But the thing about them is it's coming from their hormones. So if they still have their testicles, they're still gonna have that smell. And it's really um, interesting that people say that they're keeping their cats inside. And I just think, well, what does their house smell like? So, you know, his tray was not in a place where it was, you know, causing a problem. Um, but there goes the misters again. Um, but that's the same, girls when they spray, they won't have the same level of odor that a boy does. And that can be a little bit problematic too, because now I think there's a fire in the area. There's a siren, I hope not. Um, because they will pee randomly and you won't notice it so much because it won't have that really strong smell. And it's like I said, you know, I'd find, I'd think that something was fine and then I'd find that a cat's peed on it. Um, you don't want it and you don't the other people in your life don't want it either uh, often uh breeding cats is somebody's hobby your family is involved in it but it's your hobby and you don't really want your kids having to deal with the fact that the cats peed on their school bag you don't want um your, hus your husband or your partner um or your wife to have to go to work and their cats peed on their uniform you know um this is just not okay so when you're keeping girls, you also need to be able to provide a way of keeping them, um, keeping them under control, um, keeping them confined um, if you start to find that you have issues like this. And the more girls you have, the more likely you are to have the issues as well. So if you have one or two, it can be really easy to manage. If you have five or six, it can get a lot harder. Uh, and that's why when you're a new breeder, it's best not to get too many too quickly because dealing, um, sorting out and learning with one or two is good, but learning with five or six is not good. And you'll end up just going, I can't do this. And, and that's not great. So yeah, not what I recommend. My breeding cats, how do I keep my females? I keep my females in my cattery, in my barn, which is what you can hear now. Um, I'll just see if you can see it, there you go. That's it. There's the air conditioner on, it's really loud. Tanks on the back. So my girls are currently in there. Um, a couple of my girls are inside that um, have had babies or have got babies with them. And then my D6 cats, they rotate inside and outside. Uh, my breeding females, I, I, won't, I have them in the house when they're younger and I have them in the house when I've retired them, but I tend not to have them in the house when they're um, just, you know, while they're breeding cats basically. So they'll come in um, when, they're, when they're young, they'll go, then they'll go out in the barn, um, they'll have their babies, they'll come in to have their babies, have their babies inside um, and they're in with their babies when they're inside and they're in the, the cat room with their babies when they're um, getting a bit bigger and then they go back out to the barn again. So my house, you know, isn't getting wrecked and I'm not being kept awake at night by screaming girls or fighting girls or, or dramas and then in the barn, they're separated into different pens, into little groups of cats that like each other. So they, they don't all get along, but a lot of them do. And there was, um, at the moment I've got a group of, I've got a pair that live, are living together. And then I've got a group of four that live together. I'm hoping that the group of four and the pair can actually join up. So I've got them in pens side by side so that they can get to know each other. 
um, and then I've got another girl that's living with a D sex girl um, and you know it's all about trying to integrate them and make them happy make sure no one's being picked on make sure they're all having um, an enjoyable time the group of four we've just got a new cat wheel for them in there so they're pretty happy about that that's Bruno so you know and girls will make noises like that so Bruno's up there at the end and he makes noises like that all the time he is probably going to retire early because he's a noisy noisy cat you will have girls that'll be the same so my cat candy she was the noisiest um, queen i ever had and so she was the first one to get made at every season so that we just keep her quiet um, you'll have girls that'll be really loud depending on um, your breed but also depending on your cat so i have quiet girls and I have loud girls um, i seem to have bred out most of my loud girls by accident didn't mean to but i haven't had a really loud one in a while uh, but I'm sure there'll be one around the corner. So that's a little bit about keeping girls. If you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can just ask me a question on YouTube in the comments. Um, wherever else you're watching this, feel free to ask me a question. If you're interested in my new Cat Breeders Club, I do open it a couple of times a year and you can get on the waiting list for that. And it's on my website at www.catbreedingforbeginners.com. Um, yeah, join up, I'd love to. Um, have you joined the, the membership? I only open it when I've got, um, you know, it takes a little bit of my time. So I don't try to, I don't have too many people in there at any one time. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, life is pretty busy as you can imagine, but I will be opening it again soon. So join the list and you'll find out. But I also send out updates and information and news in between. And um, I send out um, my podcast. If you haven't listened to my podcast, it's also on my YouTube channel um, and you can get it, you know, and listen to it on all the usual podcast places like Apple and Spotify and all the rest. Um, and there's inf in information about breeding cats there for little bite-sized chunks of information that are really helpful for you so get on to that as well because I would love to help you I love this hobby and I love sharing it with other people okay bye for now